This is video 2.3, which is examples part one. Um, so the first example says, use the product rule to find the derivative of f of x, which is 3x e to the x. So I have two functions here with x in them, which means this will be my f and this will be my g, or my first and my second. I don't wanna use f because I'm already using f there and it's not the same, right? f is the whole thing. So I'm just gonna call this one the first factor and this one the second factor. So when I do my derivative, remember the mnemonic I mentioned in the lecture. I said I'm going to do the first times the derivative of the second, which I'm not doing yet, I'm just writing out what I'm going to do, this is the game plan, plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Now normally I write this out, but it does help to write that game plan out so that you know you don't make a mistake when you go in to take the actual derivative. So it's my first term, 3x, times the derivative of my second term, which is just e to the x plus the second term, which is e to the x, times the derivative of the first term. Well, the derivative of any constant times x just ends up being that constant. So then if I rewrite this properly, it would be 3x e to the x plus 3 e to the x. Now, similarly, we're gonna do the product rule for example two. So example two says use the product rule to find the derivative of g of x, which is negative sine x cosine x. So I'm going to use this as my first function, my first term, or first factor, I'm sorry, and my second factor. So when I go to take the derivative of this function, I'm gonna write out my game plan again. Well, this time I'm not going to write out the game plan because eventually you want to get it to where you're not writing every single thing. You're just writing the derivative, okay? So the first term, which is negative sine x, times the derivative of the second term. Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Plus the second term, which is cosine, times the derivative of the first term. Now the first term has a coefficient in front, negative one, but the derivative of sine is just cosine. So when I simplify this, I end up with negative sine times negative sine, which is sine squared x, and then I end up with positive cosine times a negative cosine, which is negative cosine squared x. Now we have example three where it says find f prime of x and f prime of c. So this is easy to find once we have f prime of x, we just plug in that c value. However, notice here that you have a quotient, which means in order for me to take the derivative of the function f, I am going to have to apply the quotient rule. So remember the mnemonic, low starts it off on top and low on the bottom right? So it's going to be low, which is 2x, d high, the derivative of the top, which is negative sine x, minus high, which is cosine x, d low, the derivative of the bottom, 2, all over low squared. So if I simplify this, I get negative 2x sine x minus 2 cosine x over 4x squared. So that is the derivative part. Now if I want to find f prime of c, my c being pi over 4, I just need to plug in pi over 4 here. So I need to plug in pi over 4 everywhere there is an x. So let's see how that's going to work out. Negative 2 pi over 4 
sine of pi over four minus two cosine of pi over four all over four times pi over four squared. So I get um, negative two pi over four times square root of two over two minus two times square root of two over two over four times pi squared over 16. Now I'm gonna reduce those fractions. Um, the two will reduce here, the two will reduce there, and a four will reduce there, leaving me with a four. So I get negative square, or I'd rather put the pi in the front. So negative pi square root of two minus square root of two over pi squared over four. Now we usually don't like complex fractions, so the denominator here is one, denominator here is one, denominator here is four. Common denominator between all of those is four. So I'm gonna multiply every fraction by four. That'll cancel these four down here, but I'll end up with negative four pi square root of two minus four square root of two all over pi squared.